In this video, we will answer the question, once you are charged with a criminal offense, what are your speedy trial rights? The answer to that question is coming right up. Welcome back to Costitis Law. If you're new here, I'm Steve Costitis, and this is my channel. I post weekly videos just like this one about how to manage encounters that you may have with the police, how to effectively navigate the criminal justice system, and how to defend criminal charges. I enjoy responding to your questions and your comments, so add those down in the comments section below. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to become a part of the Gestatus Law community, then consider subscribing to my channel. And you can do that by just clicking on that uh, capital black and white G down in the lower right-hand corner of the video screen. This video begins a new series on your rights to a speedy trial. Today's video will discuss the elements of your constitutional rights to a speedy trial as set forth by the United States Supreme Court in the case called Barker v. Wingo. Other states may have statutory laws or constitutional laws of their own that sets, uh, sets forth uh, rights to a speedy trial. But the federal law that we'll discuss today is the foundational uh, law for all other speedy trial rights. If you're interested in other videos in the series, those can be found down in the description section. The basis of your right to a speedy trial can be found in the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution. And I quote, In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall have the right to a speedy and public trial. End quote. Federal law also dictates the remedy for a speedy trial violation, and that is a dismissal of the prosecution. That's a very, very powerful right indeed. The Barker v. Wingo case established the test to determine whether or not a speedy trial violation has occurred. That test involves four factors that the court will consider in determining whether or not that violation occurred. Number one, what was the length of the delay? Number two, what was the reason for the delay? Number three, what prejudice, if any, did the accused person suffer as a result of the delay? And then finally, number four, did the accused person assert their right to a speedy trial? Let's look at each one of these factors individually. Number one, the length of the delay is what we call the triggering mechanism and determines whether or not the court will go on to consider all four of the Barker versus Wingo factors. The measurement of the length of delay begins with the date that you were arrested. And courts will generally consider delay of up to about a year as enough to trigger an evaluation of all four factors. But remember that the length of delay is only the first step in determining whether or not your speedy trial rights have been violated. Number two, reasons for delay. Generally, different weights will be given to different reasons for delay in a case. For instance, if there was a deliberate attempt by the prosecutor to delay trial, that delay would be weighed very, very heavily against the state in the speedy trial analysis. On the other hand, if there was delay caused by you or your attorney, for instance, requesting more time to investigate, that delay will be held against you uh, in the analysis. There are other more neutral reasons for delay, like crowded court dockets, and those reasons will typically be held against the state, but uh, much less heavily than a deliberate attempt. And then, of course, any valid reason for delay will not be held against either party in the speedy trial analysis. Number three, 
Number three, assertion of the right. In order to have any chance of winning a speedy trial claim, the accused person must be able to show that they asserted their right, that they requested a trial early and often. In other words, in order to uh, win a speedy trial claim, you must be able to prove that you ask that the court uh, set your case for a trial at its earliest opportunity. Now, the best way to make those requests are to uh, ask for a trial on the record in court or to file motions with the court uh, requesting that your case be set for trial. In that way, you'll be able to prove that you affirmatively asserted your right to a speedy trial and meet that third prong of the Barker versus Wingo test. Number four. Lastly, in order to be able to win your speedy trial claim, you must be able to prove that you suffered some type of prejudice because of the trial delay. Prejudice is anything that impairs your defense. For instance, if trial delay caused evidence to be lost that was helpful to your defense, or if trial delay caused you to lose witnesses by death, for instance, that is a way to prove prejudice. Proving prejudice is important because prejudice skews the fairness of the system uh, in favor of the prosecution. Other types of uh, prejudice that might be considered in the case are uh, oppressive pretrial incarceration or even anxiety and concern that you may have suffered because of the trial delay. The analysis of these four Barker versus Wingo factors will be made by the trial judge in your case. So the trial judge will ultimately decide whether or not the speedy trial violation occurred. If the judge decides yes, that did, uh, did occur, then the judge has the power to dismiss the case without the prosecutor's permission. If the uh, judge decides no, then at least your speedy trial claim has been preserved for appeal. In the next videos in this series, we will discuss, one, why is your criminal case taking so long to resolve? And number two, should you assert your rights to a speedy trial? So stay tuned to Gestatus Law for the next two videos in this speedy trial series.